In this video, we're going to implement seamless in PLS, and I'm using five minutes to just refresh how and why we use that. So, if you're looking at this topology, we have two different routing domains. One is called core, and the other is called access in this situation. But the point here is that we have two different locations of the same customer. PE uh, actually one routers one and nine are both PEs and they have their CEs connected. We do want to uh, provide this customer reachability between his sites, and at this point this is not happening because router one and router nine are in different routing domains. So router nine has LDP neighborship with router seven and it does have a label uh, for 5.5.5.1, let's say the router 5's IP address. But it has no knowledge about router 1, and what we'll actually do is we're going to have two BGP LU sessions, one between 1 and 5, and one between 5 and 9, so labeled unicast. If you don't know, BGP label unicast is used to advertise labels for IPv4 prefixes. By default, with uh, the IPv4 unicast address family, you only advertise the IPv4 prefixes and, of course, the BGP uh, path attributes, but without any labels. With LU, you also advertise labels for those routes. This way, router 9 will learn about router 1's IP loopback address and it will actually use a label in order to reach that. And after this BGP LU session is up, we are also going to establish, usually you use a route reflector, but in this case, let's say this will be direct, so this will be a VPN v4 session to exchange the CE routes as VPN before routes, of course. And how traffic will flow from router 9 to router 1? Well, it will do the following. So, first of all, router 9 does a lookup inside the VPN, inside the VRF, it finds this VPN before label and it attaches the VPN before label as the bottom label because this is the final destination. The next hop of this IP of this VPN v4 route is 1.1.1.1. Router 9 checks uh, how it can reach this 1.1.1.1. It learned the IP address of the next hop through this BGP LU session, so through this session from router 5, and it's just going to also attach the BGP BGP LU label so this is the second label that gets attached and then this route this bgp LU route also has a next hop which is 5.5.5.1 because this was learned uh, from router 5 and in order to reach router 5 we also need to attach this ldp label so we'll have a total of three labels on this link then Router 7 is directly connected with Router 5, so the LDP label will be popped by Router 7, and it's only two labels that reach Router 5. And it's important to note here that the top label uh, will be the BGP LU label, and in this way, Router 5 will know that this packet needs to reach Router 1. Because Router 5 itself received this IP address of 1.1.1.1 through BGP. It now imposes this LDP label to reach 1.1.1.1, the next hop of the BGP LU update. And then again, we have three labels. And here, between 3 and 1, we're not going, we're going to pop the LDP label. And we're going to have just two labels. And actually, I'm not sure, we'll have to check if we're going to attach the BGP LU label. I think no. So we're actually going to have two labels. 
the VPN v4.1 and the LDP clip, and I think that's how it is. We're going to see in a trace route because it's enough for router one to just receive the VPN v4 label, but again, we'll see that in a trace route after we implement everything. But this is the main idea with seamless and PLS topologies. So in this part, we're going to continue with the LU configuration and then only after the VPN v4. So let's start on 21 and we're going to configure let's find that we don't have any residual configuration we don't and i'm going to start with the bgp20 configuration so router bgp20 to enable lu you just need to advertise the network that is dash 32 and issue this allocate label all command and where you're going to allocate dynamic labels for all these networks in here. Then, by the way, these ASBRs will be route reflectors, of course, because they're going to take an internal BGP LU route and uh, advertise them to another internal BGP LU router. So, right now we're going to just configure from 21 to 33 we're going to configure 33 as an ibgp edu neighbor so it goes like this removed as20 update source lubeck one of course and then instead of ipv4 unicast that's ipv4 labeled unicast now and for redundancy i'm going to do the same for 24 so it's remote AS20 and update tours Lubeck one and IPv4 label unicast. Because I'm already here uh, under BGP, I'll also configure the VPN v4 session towards the route reflector. So in our case, 29 is the route reflector. And for that, I'll just need to first enable the vpn for unicast af and under the neighbor remote as20 update source lubeck one and vpn for unicast af let's see the whole configuration it's pretty easy just the okay go to let's call it it's just this new AS family that's new. Everything else should be uh, the same as you would configure an IPv4 unicast AF. So to put the same config on 22, I just need to do this. 23 and 24, 29. Okay, I'm good to go. Then on 27, it's 27, 27, 1, and let's just put it, and then on 28, something similar. Okay, so we're done with the configuration on the PEs. And now we need to continue with the configuration on the ASBRs. And let me go on 23. 23 and 24 are the ASBRs in our case. So router BGP 20. First of all, you're going to need this, this one line that's going to allow you to modify IBGP uh, to modify the next hop when you're advertising an IBGP route because by default you won't do that so IBGP policy out enforce modifications if I don't do this on router 23 when it's going to reflect the route 
from 21. So 21 will advertise 21, 21, 21, that one to 23. Then 23 is going to reflect that to 27. If without this command, 23 will leave the default next hop, which is 21.21.21.1. And this, of course, is not useful because I want router 23 to put its own next hop as the next hop of the BGP route so that 27 can route, can use LDP to uh, push a label towards router 23 and route towards 23, which he knows of because it's in the same area. Okay, and then let's enable LDU under the IPv4 unicast EF, and then we're going to configure all these neighbors, remote AS20, update source, it's loopback1, IPv4 label unicast, and we need two things here, first one is the route reflector client and then is the next hop self and let me do a show so that i can copy everything so i have three neighbors 21 is done then 22 then 7 and of course 8 so this is how you do it real fast and this is the whole configuration that it's going to get applied on both 23 and 24 so that's why i'm copying it let's go again over it so i've told you what this command does this is to allocate labels for ipv4 unicast prefixes and these are my four neighbors and the configuration is correct and i can just apply the exact same configuration on okay, 124 and something's wrong ah it's outer bgp it's called external not outer but <laughs> yeah some bad jokes here okay let's see the configuration on 29 here we're going to configure it as a vpn v4 out reflector so bgp20 and it's address family vpn v4 unicast we've enabled it and neighbor 21 21 21 1 remote AS20, update source loopback1 and route reflector client and the same for all other nodes it should be 27 and 28 Okay, 21, 22, 27, and 28. That's great. So the VPN v4 configuration is uh, the usual one. You don't have anything special here. The 21 will advertise the VPN v4 route towards 29. 29 is going to reflect it to 27. And this is how you get the customer's routing information. Okay, and let's now go back on 21 and see if everything's fine. So show BGP IPv4 label unicast summary will show us the IPv4 label unicast sessions. And that's good. We have two sessions with the inline route reflectors, which are the ASBRs. Let's see what actual routes we received. So we receive the routes of other PEs and that's great then you can also do a show BGP labels and this will show you what actual labels each of these ASBRs advertise and it's for let's say for 27 
from uh, for the route of so for loopback of 27 we receive from 23 label 23,005 so this is a label advertised allocated by router 23 and this is why we needed this configuration here under the route reflector also you see each inline route reflector so the LEU route reflectors 23 and 24 allocate labels from their own pool and their own range that we've configured in the LDP part okay and if I do a show self 27271 I see that I'm imposing this LDU label and this implicit new label, which is from LDP. Uh, let's go trace route and then we'll check it also from 27. And we see one label only. I'll show you from the other side also. And we don't have any VPNv4 routes, but the VPNv4 session with the route reflector is up. Let's check this also on 27. So show BGP IPv4 labeled unit as summary shows us two peers. This shows these uh, the route of all routes, but we're concentrating on this one. And this is from 23 IP loopback one of 21. And if we do show BGP labels, it shows us that 23 advertised this label for 21.21.21.1. And if we now do a show self, we're going to see two labels. First one is the LDP label to reach 23, and then it's the LU label to reach 21. So show self 21.21.1 slash 32. So this is the LU label and this is the LDP label. If I do a show MPLS LDP bindings for 23, 32 this is the LDP label that we're using to reach 23. Okay, and if I do a trace route, we're going to see both these labels. Actually, it's what's 21. Okay, and actually let's check the VPN V4 sessions from the route reflector. All our sessions are up and we don't receive any prefixes because we didn't yet configure the VRFs on CE5 and 6. And that's mostly it. We're done with the core routing with the MPLS part. In the next video, we're going to do the interest part. So we're going to configure VRFs on 21 and 28 and inter-AS on 21 and 22. So see you in the next video.